Ever wondered how cyber criminals are caught or how law enforcement solves online crimes? Imagine someone steals your personal information online or hacks into a company's system. How do they track down the criminal? How can they find the evidence? In today's digital world, technology is the key to solving these crimes. In this video, we're diving into the fascinating world of cybercrime investigations and digital forensics. We'll uncover how experts use technology to trace hackers, fraudsters, and cybercriminals, even when they think they've covered their tracks. I'll walk you through the entire process of a cybercrime investigation, from the moment a crime is reported to the methods used to track the culprits. Then, we'll explore the role of digital forensics, the science behind recovering data from computers, phones, and other devices that can be crucial in cracking a case. Whether it's hidden messages, deleted files, or hacked systems, you'll see how forensics experts uncover the truth. But first, what is cybercrime? Cybercrime refers to criminal activities that involve computers, networks, or digital devices as a tool for committing illegal acts. These crimes exploit technology to manipulate, steal, or damage valuable data or systems. In a digital world where nearly everything is interconnected, cybercriminals can access sensitive information, steal identities, and even disrupt entire networks. The reach of cybercrime is vast, and its consequences can be devastating for individuals, businesses, and even nations. Now, here are some top examples of cybercrimes that are worth mentioning. 1. Hacking One of the most common forms of cybercrime is hacking, which involves unauthorized access to computers or networks. Hackers use various techniques to break into systems, often with the intent to steal personal data, financial information, or intellectual property. A famous example is the 2017 Equifax breach, where millions of Americans' personal details were compromised by hackers, exploiting a vulnerability in the company's system. 2. Phishing Phishing is another prevalent form of cybercrime where criminals use deceptive emails, messages, or websites to trick individuals into revealing sensitive information like passwords, credit card numbers, or social security numbers. These attacks often appear to be from trusted organizations like banks or tech companies, making it harder for users to distinguish between real and fake messages. 3. Ransomware Ransomware is a type of malicious software that locks a user's data or device and demands payment, usually in cryptocurrency, to release it. In 2017, the WannaCry ransomware attack paralyzed systems worldwide, affecting hospitals, businesses, and governments. Cybercriminals use ransomware to extort money from victims, causing massive disruption. 4. Online Fraud Online fraud comes in many forms, including scams like fake e-commerce sites, Ponzi schemes, and fraudulent investment opportunities. Cybercriminals deceive individuals into giving away money or personal details by pretending to offer legitimate services or products. One well-known case is the Nigerian Prince scam, where fraudsters promise large sums of money in exchange for an upfront fee. In essence, cybercrime takes many forms, but they all have one thing in common exploiting technology for personal gain. These crimes can cause significant harm, and understanding them is the first step towards staying safe online. Now let's move on to the role of cybercrime investigation and begins. Cybercrime investigations typically begin when a crime is reported or when suspicious activity is detected. Whether it's a victim reporting a hacked account or a company discovering unusual network activity, investigations start with tracing these digital footprints. Digital traces can come from any number of sources, a hacked email, a compromised credit card transaction, or a sudden drop in network performance. Investigators quickly jump into action to gather data, which might include everything from the compromised devices themselves to network logs and server activity. This initial collection of information forms the foundation for the investigation. Next is the process of investigation. This begins first with evidence collection. One of the first steps in a cybercrime investigation is gathering evidence. Law enforcement works to collect physical devices like hard drives, laptops, and smartphones, along with network logs or server records. The critical aspect here is ensuring that the evidence is preserved in its original state. This is done by creating forensic images of the devices and data so investigators don't accidentally alter or destroy any evidence in the process. 
Any modification to the evidence could potentially compromise the integrity of the case, making it inadmissible in court. Digital trails. Cybercriminals leave behind digital trails, which are often the key to solving a case. These trails are records of their actions, things like IP addresses, timestamps, browser history, and transaction logs. By analyzing these digital footprints, investigators can trace a criminal's movements online. For instance, an IP address can often be linked to a physical location or a specific internet service provider, which can narrow down the search. Timestamps help establish a timeline of events, allowing investigators to pinpoint when the crime took place and whether the suspect was active during the attack. Collaboration with experts. Given the complexity of cybercrimes, investigators often rely on digital forensic experts. These experts are trained in recovering and analyzing digital evidence, including deleted files, encrypted data, and hidden information. For example, if an online fraudster deletes their emails or alters their browsing history to cover their tracks, forensic experts have tools and techniques to recover that data. They can also decrypt files or analyze network traffic to uncover malicious activity. This collaboration between cybercrime investigators and forensic specialists is vital in building a strong case. Tools used by investigators. To aid their investigations, Cybercrime units use several specialized tools. One such tool is Wireshark, a network traffic analyzer that helps investigators monitor network activity and detect suspicious data packets or malware communication. This tool can trace a hacker's network activity, identifying anomalies in data flow that point to cybercrime. Another important tool is Nmap, a network scanner used to discover hosts and services on a computer network identifying open ports and vulnerabilities that might be exploited by cybercriminals. These tools, among others, are invaluable for tracking down and analyzing the malicious activities of cybercriminals. By using these and many more tools, investigators can uncover hidden data and piecing together the criminal's digital footprint. Now let's move on to our next question. What is digital forensics? Digital forensics is the science of recovering, preserving, and analyzing data from digital devices in a way that can be presented in court as evidence. In essence, it involves using specialized techniques and tools to retrieve data from computers, smartphones, servers, and other digital devices, whether the data is deleted, hidden, or encrypted. Digital forensics plays a crucial role in modern crime solving, because so much of our personal and professional lives are stored and conducted online. From cybercrimes to financial fraud, digital forensics provides the crucial evidence needed to build a case and secure a conviction. It's the backbone of solving many crimes in the digital age. Now, let's take a deep dive into the role of digital forensics. One, data recovery. One of the primary tasks of digital forensics is data recovery. Forensic experts specialize in extracting data from devices, even when files have been deleted, damaged, or corrupted. This is incredibly important because criminals often try to cover their tracks by deleting emails, files, or data logs. However, thanks to the sophisticated methods used in digital forensics, this deleted data can often be recovered. Even if a file is seemingly gone, traces of it may still remain in the system or storage device, waiting to be uncovered. Two. Evidence Analysis Once the data is recovered, forensic experts thoroughly analyze it to uncover criminal activity. This can include everything from analyzing emails and chat logs to examining social media posts and transaction records. For example, an investigator might look at a suspect's deleted chat history to find incriminating conversations or trace financial transactions to identify illegal activity. Social media platforms often contain key evidence in fraud cases where suspects may have posted links to fake business ventures or bragged about scamming people. Forensic experts don't just focus on obvious data, they analyze every scrap of information, looking for hidden details that could connect the dots in the investigation. Here are the three main key forensic techniques you need to know. One, disk imaging. One of the first techniques used in digital forensics is disk imaging. This process involves creating an exact bit-by-bit -bit copy of a hard drive, SSD, or any other storage device. 
This is crucial because it allows forensic experts to analyze the data without ever altering or damaging the original device. By working from the image of the device, investigators can freely examine data, run tests, and look for hidden files without the risk of tampering with crucial evidence. 2. File Carving Another important technique is file carving, which allows forensic experts to recover files that have been deleted or partially damaged. In some cases, even if the files are no longer visible in the file system, they can be retrieved by analyzing the raw data. For instance, deleted documents or images might still exist in the storage space and can be carved out of the device, often revealing critical pieces of evidence that the suspect thought were erased. Lastly, metadata analysis. Metadata analysis is an essential forensic technique. Metadata is hidden data embedded within files, such as timestamps, authorship details, and even geolocation information. This information can tell forensic experts when a file was created, modified, or deleted, and sometimes it can even tell them where the file was accessed from. This kind of analysis can be invaluable in identifying the timing and location of criminal activity or in proving that a suspect was involved in illegal actions at a particular time and place. Moving on, let's examine the tools of the trade in digital forensics. The following is an overview of common digital forensics tools. 1. Encase. One of the most widely used tools in digital forensics is Encase. It's a comprehensive suite designed for examining hard drives and creating forensic images of devices. Encase allows investigators to perform in-depth analysis by searching for deleted files, gathering system logs, and identifying anomalies in data. It's known for its ability to handle large volumes of data and preserve the integrity of digital evidence, making it a trusted tool for law enforcement and private investigators alike. 2. FTK Forensic Toolkit FTK Forensic Toolkit is another powerful tool used in digital forensics. It's specifically designed to help investigators recover deleted files, conduct email investigations, and trace internet history. One of its standout features is its ability to analyze email archives and file systems in detail, enabling investigators to track down crucial evidence hidden in a suspect's emails or browsing activity. FTK also supports decryption and password cracking, which is vital for accessing encrypted data that criminals might attempt to hide. 3. Autopsy For those seeking an open-source alternative, Autopsy is a highly regarded digital forensics tool. It's free to use and helps investigators extract and analyze data from devices like computers and smartphones. Autopsy provides a user-friendly interface and supports a wide range of features, including recovering deleted files, analyzing web activity, and conducting keyword searches. While it may not have the extensive features of commercial tools like Encase, Autopsy is still a powerful tool for both professionals and beginners in digital forensics. Real-life application. These tools aren't just theoretical. They've been instrumental in solving some of the most complex cybercrimes in recent years. From uncovering evidence in online fraud cases to tracing hackers involved in high-profile breaches, digital forensics tools like Encase, FTK, and Autopsy have been essential in bringing criminals to justice. For instance, in one case, investigators used FTK to recover deleted emails that exposed a large-scale Ponzi scheme. In another, Encase helped solve a hacking incident by revealing traces of the hacker's digital footprint. Next off is real-life example of cybercrime investigation, a case study. Let's take a closer look at a famous case where digital forensics played a crucial role in catching cybercriminals. In 2016, during a high-profile political campaign, several social media accounts belonging to prominent politicians were hacked. The hackers gained access to private emails, social media accounts, and confidential information, creating chaos and threatening the integrity of the campaign. To track down the perpetrators, forensic experts from law enforcement agencies worked tirelessly to gather and analyze digital evidence. They started by examining the data from social media platforms and email servers, searching for any digital footprints left behind by the hackers. By analyzing login times, IP addresses, and activity logs, they managed to trace the attacker's digital trail. These traces eventually led investigators to a group of hackers operating from multiple locations. With the evidence in hand, law enforcement was able to make arrests and dismantle the hacking operation. Lessons learned. 
This case provides several important lessons. First, it emphasizes the significance of gathering and preserving digital evidence. In this instance, the integrity of the data, such as the IP addresses and timestamps, was crucial for building a solid case. Second, it demonstrates how digital forensics can track even the most elusive criminals. The hackers thought they had covered their tracks, but by thoroughly analyzing their digital activity, experts were able to uncover the truth. Finally, this case underscores the importance of securing data, especially sensitive political or personal information, and how digital forensics helps authorities recover and protect that data in a way that can lead to successful prosecutions. Moving on, let's talk about how you can protect yourself. First, preventive measures. Now that we've discussed how cybercrime investigations work and the role of digital forensics, let's shift gears to talk about how you can protect yourself from becoming a victim of cybercrime. Prevention is always better than cure, and there are several simple steps you can take to stay safe online. Use strong passwords. One of the easiest and most effective ways to secure your accounts is by using strong, unique passwords. Avoid using obvious passwords like 123456 or your name. Instead, create complex passwords with a combination of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. Additionally, use different passwords for each of your accounts. This way, if one account is compromised, the others remain secure. Enable two-factor authentication. Another layer of protection you can add to your accounts is two-factor authentication, 2FA. This extra security step requires not just your password, but also a second form of identification, like a code sent to your phone or email. Even if someone steals your password, they won't be able to access your account without this additional code. Beware of phishing scams. Phishing is one of the most common methods criminals use to steal personal information. Never click on suspicious links or download attachments from unknown sources. If you receive an email claiming to be from your bank, social media site, or a company, verify the legitimacy before clicking anything. Phishing attempts often look official, but they are designed to steal your sensitive information. Second, digital hygiene. In addition to these preventive measures, practicing good digital hygiene is essential to staying safe online. Regularly update software. Always keep your software up to date. Cybercriminals often exploit known vulnerabilities in outdated programs to gain access to your system. By updating your software regularly, you patch these holes and make it harder for hackers to breach your defenses. Avoid unsecured public Wi-Fi for sensitive tasks. Public Wi-Fi networks are convenient but can be risky, especially when you're handling sensitive information like online banking. Avoid conducting financial transactions or logging into important accounts on unsecured networks as they can be a prime target for hackers. Back up your data. Finally, regularly back up your important data. Whether it's photos, documents, or financial information, backing up ensures that even if you become the victim of a cyber attack like ransomware, you won't lose your valuable files. Now, sit back and let's do a quick recap on what you've learned on cybercrime investigation and digital forensics. Today, we've explored the world of cybercrime investigations and digital forensics. We've looked at how cybercrimes are tracked down, from identifying digital footprints to using specialized tools for evidence collection. We also delved into the crucial role of digital forensics in recovering and analyzing data and how tools like NCASE, FTK, and Autopsy help investigators crack complex cases. Finally, we discussed how you can protect yourself from becoming a victim by using strong passwords, enabling two-factor authentication, staying alert to phishing scams, and practicing good digital hygiene. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on more valuable tech insights and I'd love to hear from you. Share your thoughts in the comments below. What cybersecurity or digital forensics topic would you like to learn more about next?